take part in our latest Patreon contest at patreon.com slash the cinema snob, where this time you can win yourself a big box of the 1979 Full Moon Features Classic Tourist Trap. What? Every year young people disappear? Yes, but it makes for fine Netflix documentaries. This big box contains a Blu-ray of the film, a Chuck Connors action figure, and has a quote from Stephen King, but the box may or may not be full of bees. It also comes with this DVD of Curse of the Puppet Master, and I'll even throw in the grossest of the uncut snob DVDs, the Cinema Snob's Unerotic Fantasies. Participate in this contest and other contests every month plus early videos by subscribing to patreon.com slash the cinema snob or click on the links in the description and comments. Well, we've gotten updates lately on everything from the Adams family to the witches. So sure, the craft, why not? Actually, I think that is technically the category of sequel that that's in. The sure, why not category. The Craft, aka 1996 Time Capsule, is a beloved documentary of Catholic high school girls in trouble. This story of what happens when schoolgirls deal in some witchcraft came from a story by Peter Filardi, who also wrote Flatliners, and the script was co-written along with the film's director, Andrew Fleming. Yes, you may say director of Hamlet 2 and Dick. I say the director of the 1988 Elm Street exploitation film Bad Dreams. Our film's heroes, Sarah, Nancy, Bonnie, and Rochelle, are played by Robin Tunney, Feruza Balk, Nev Campbell, and Rachel True. False! <clears throat> now let's take a look back at, huh, what movies were popular when I was in high school? As the film opens in the props department for Practical Magic, they are cursing all critics who would dare give this film only one star, among some other things for themselves. <laughs> See, their spell came true. They got free tickets for an Our Lady Peace concert. Also, the movie is its own fan-made montage. As you can see, the movie is also co-starring the 90s. Just the 90s. Everything 90s. Sarah and her family are moving from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Ugh, why are we flying? I wish I had a broom. This was in the time when we all just stared out of windows while it was raining. It was a mopey-ass time in our history. Oh, oh, yeah, it's a lot drier in here, Dad. We're all so sarcastic about everything. I'm totally kidding, by the way. Don't take me seriously. At least she remembered to take with her her favorite picture of Joni Mitchell. Props to the wig department, since Robin Tunney wears a wig through the whole movie, due to shaving her head for Empire Records. And for a majority of it, you really can't tell. Sometimes you can. Unfortunately, this is the same neighborhood from the witches where people like to scare others with snakes. Found yourself back, you wanna? No! Yeah, look, can you find someone in a treehouse to try to kidnap? Good thing she's saved by her dad, Cliff de Young. Of course Cliff de Young is in this. Between all the movies I've done recently featuring Jessica Harper, this is just the year of shock treatment Brad and Janet on the site. Off to school, she doesn't have a school uniform yet, but she's dressed in attitude. You can wait. You know, I mean, just until you got a school uniform, you don't have to go now. I can't stay home and watch daytime TV for the rest of my life. I mean, ugh, like, ugh, whatever. Wow, what an outcast. She's practically the elephant man. Gross. She knows exactly who to fit in with. These girls haven't been the same since Blockbuster Video stocked the edited version of the Doom Generation. Also, they're late for notable actor appearance class. Uh, très bien, monsieur. <laughs> Holy shit, it's Seth Green! Oh, wait, did I do that joke already in the Freddy's Dead review? Or did I do the opposite of it in the It review? Plus, Skeet Depp is really pissed at Sarah giving attitude to their attitude. The twist, however, is that the class is definitely a dream. She has the gift. I mean, the craft. <laughs> well, so much for shoving it in the teacher's eye. 
now to make her move. Do you guys mind if I sit with you? Because I'm supposed to find a lap group. Yeah, okay. Too much attitude. I'll try my luck with the Cullens. Better than with the guy so skeevy that his name is Chris Hooker. Oh, shit. It's the bitches of Eastwick. What? Uh, excuse me. It's my job to reference the witches of Eastwick. You go back to being a dick. Well, you see the one on the right? She's a major slut. Not to mention they are dirty smokers. If only this were on Netflix so they could warn me about this horror. Alas, smoking is okay at this school. Not to mention unsolicited uses of slow motion. God, does this take me back. I remember that time when everyone used to be 1996. And when we trusted the guy who was clearly a creeper. I'm not watching him. He spreads disease. I speak from personal experience. I have killer athlete's foot that I cannot get rid of. Now that school is done, they can go off to their moonlighting gig on a schoolgirl fetish website. After stopping off at Ray's Occult Bookstore, of course, they're there to pick up the classic, The Berenstain Bears Sacrifice a Goat. So long as they abide by the rules. That's not for you. I'm sorry. You're not ready for the power of finding Waldo and the nasty nasties yet. Meanwhile, this guy will not give up offering her a snake. Bro, try a chocolate bar. Eh, he's no creepier than the guys at their high school. The only thing that can protect them now is summoning a crossing the street cliche. Listen to me. God damn it, J.J. Abrams. Back then, it was easy to find a safe place to run to. In 96, if there was tall grass, then there will definitely be a random couch in it. <laughs> we saw a man die. Maybe we can do magic now. You guys, maybe he'll really listen now. Who? Robert Smith. These girls are all meant to be together since they all speak in blog. Sometimes I'll, I'll want it to rain and a pipe will burst to my room and it'll just get flooded. <laughs> she bases all of her wishes on the best episodes of Unsolved Mysteries. Speaking of, this guy is an Unsolved Mysteries fugitive waiting to happen. What could possibly go wrong here? If he pushes her off the roof, she might float away. Anyway, let's bang! I can't. I gotta go home. Are you mad? No. Must think of another way to appease the god Rapula. Well, that turned out okay. We didn't have sex, but he's a true gentleman who tells everyone we've had sex. You told everybody what? That you guys did it. But we didn't. You've never been to high school, have you? She tries to confront Chris, but his sidekick gets in the way. Can I talk to you for a second? I'm sorry, Chris is really busy. Maybe we could set some up for um, a nice jacket later in the week. I miss when they were dogs. Hey, you want I should dig up some bones for you? Anything you say, Spike. Neither Chris or his soul are gonna get away with this. Hey, Chris. Jesus, man. Huh. I wasn't expecting her to turn out to be Christian. Oh, right. I almost forgot about mean girl Christine Taylor. She is sort of like a regular high school mean girl, only if she was also head cheerleader for the KKK. Why are you doing this to me, Laura? Because I don't like Negroids. What? But that's the best title for a 70s black exploitation android movie. The other girls had their own problems, like Bonnie's back being covered with scars. I'm moving the armature over you now. And you'll feel a little sting when the needle penetrates. Also, it might shoot you in the head. Meanwhile, Nancy often breaks into Rabbit's trailer from 8 Mile to make her own life feel worse. There's nothing a little bus attituding can't help. They're on their way to the town of Ugh in the state of Montana. Girls, watch out for those weirdos. <laughs> we are the weirdos, mister. Yeah, okay. I have more trailer lines to drop off. Catch you later. The first meeting of their Avatar fan club shall now commence. Fire, water, earth, air. I wasn't really feeling your fire or water, therefore I'm gonna stab you in the chest. Afterwards, they do a diabetes test. That's important. Let's just say their main ritual is gonna involve eating a lot of Halloween candy. Fun size Snickers, here we come. Boy, it's a beautiful day for curses. I drink of my sisters and I ask to love myself more. 
great. They're going to invent Twitter and curse us all, aren't they? They are feeling that rush. Maybe it was a mistake to mix pixie sticks into a whole cup of grape juice. Sarah casts a love spell on Chris, and for this plot point to be ripped off wholesale and wish upon. I'm really not even paying attention to what they're saying, because something about this school feels like any minute now, Nacho Libre is gonna wrestle in front of the whole class. I'm surprised it's taken this long for a sleepover. In 1996, girls loved themselves some Wheel of Fortune. Move over, Julian Sands! That Pat Sajak is our true warlock. Soon enough, they skip singing Look at Me, I'm Sandra D," and go right into the games. Did you guys ever play that game? Light as a feather, stiff as a board? No, because that movie The Craft hasn't been released yet. It's a very easy game when you have a special effects team there. And Captain Howdy, who just loves messing with young girls' games, from Ouija boards to light as a feather, stiff as a board. <laughs> they have fun watching the A Little on the Twitching Nose channel. But back to serious business, they are stealing a bit of Laura's hair. We're gonna put it in her soup. Ew, she's gonna eat her own hair. So gross. Or, uh, wait, they make her hair fall out. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. Robin Tunney has a fantastic wig collection. And jokes on them, her hair falling out has nothing to do with the curse. Rachel just talked her into it so that Ross would break up with her. The movie, however, is more of a Seinfeld fan, due to Sue Ellen Mischke being Bonnie's doctor. She's the best, too. All she has to do is scrape away those makeup effects. And damn, bro! Whoever bet that they could turn Bonnie into prom queen is gonna win that bet! Nancy's plot is a bit darker, as she wants to get rid of her evil stepfather, which she does because he dies. Plus, they get $175,000 from it. The downside, though, this is her next stepfather. And they blew all $175,000 by spending it on one night in this penthouse suite. They even have a jukebox that plays nothing but My Chemical Romance. It also has its own angst room. I'm sure we can figure out how to paint those windows black. Ah, good. Waiting until nighttime. That'll do. Enough with these deadly spells. Let's get back to some silly ones. Ah, that just doubled the wig budget! Let us now take a break as the girls use their magic to turn their copy of Jawbreaker into a copy of Heather's. And now it's time for What If It Exploded, hosted by Lloyd. Hold on, everybody. Here it comes. And this has been What If It Exploded, hosted by me, Lloyd. Ah, good, we're back so we can check in on that Chris subplot. She forgot that the name of this spell was Oops. He's so in love with her, he wants them to move in together. He did just get a promotion at RST Video. There is certainly a downside to these spells and curses, as they find out that whatever happens, they get back times three. Also, you'll be addicted to mushrooms. And the worst part of using all of this magic? You are sickened by the weakness. You'll constantly be followed around by the sounds of the mid-late 90s. These girls don't care what happens with their powers, though. Especially when a strong wind comes in, causing a beach bum sleeping bag and tent to catch fire. Bitches! I don't know how they do it, but somehow their words are gonna summon a Sharknado, as if they care. Hail to the guardians of the watchtowers of the north by the powers of Mother and Earth. Did everyone in 1996 have to sound so disinterested in everything? Yes. Yes, we did. What's it to you? Now they will have the full invocation of the spirit with endless movie references. <laughs> a bad feeling about this. They now wake up with the secrets of the universe, which is mainly just them now fully understanding the ending of the Peter Sellers classic being there. On the bright side, they did stop that Sharknado. Good thing she was walking on the water, because whoever stepped foot in that water would have been eaten in seconds. See, this is why she shouldn't have returned to Oz, because she came back all dark and shit. Or darker, at least. My god, now she's greedy with power and seemingly seduced by evil and running red lights. 
I am so shocked by this turn from a character who's such a downer, her last name is literally Downs. She's making hanging out with Chris the better option. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's like we're one person, you know what I mean? No, I'm not sure. I can't think, I just feel. Mm, spoken like someone who has a whole book of Troy Dyer fanfiction. It momentarily becomes a stalker film. Could you not decide between renting the craft or fear? Relax, this movie's both. I feel this character would have tried this regardless of having a love spell cast on him. Luckily, they are all here for Sarah, which pisses off Nancy because no one has noticed her new hairstyle. She is going to take it out on this party and get revenge on Chris herself. And this was right before Jamie Kennedy was going to teach them the rules of a slasher film. Fortunately, this all goes by Scooby-Doo rules. What the? Hey, yeah, he ain't going to remember that shit. Also, never mind the transformation. She's still the evil one. <laughs> You're a witch! Now he's gonna burn her with insults. But seriously, don't piss off anyone who looks like this. You'll definitely die. <laughs> no, they cut out the part where he landed on Stifler. Damn, not Chris. He, um, existed. Yeah, I liked him. I think that he was a good guy underneath it all. I mean, aside from the whole attempted rape and spreading sex rumors thing. She tries to bind Nancy from doing any more harm, and if there's time, please fill the swimming pool. There is good news, though. The bus driver is there to drop off more trailer shots. Ooh, I bet she's not gonna wake up from a dream. What? A dream? Now they've become the mean girls. They kicked in the stall door and are gonna force her to smoke cigarettes and write Chris as a dead hooker on the wall. They ask Sarah to leave this school goth style. And please don't do any more spells on me. Spoken in the same manner as asking to hold the sugar in the coffee. Hopefully she can check out the best Anne Rice books to help with this situation. But in order to help you, we're gonna need to eat a baby. And yes, you can use barbecue sauce. Since Nancy used the dark side of the Force, they need the gift of foreshadowing to help. She may be able to defeat Nancy, but it's gonna come back threefold. So her dad is gonna be burnt at the stake by another witch. Crazy. Well, you knew that was coming. Hey, close enough. Apparently her dad and sister just died in a plane crash. However, this does lead to a pretty effective sequence that could be an entire horror film in and of itself. The house becomes covered in rats and snakes coming from everywhere to where the house is practically buried in snakes. Even the bathroom is overrun by bugs. But then the biggest snake of all comes in to strike with the power of a Twitter reply. If I was as pathetic as you are, I would have killed myself ages ago. You should get on with it. You know, sometimes your words are more poisonous than snake venom. The other girls are on Nancy's side, too, and they're gonna float the shit out of this situation, all led with the power of acting. Why doesn't she use magic on us? Because she's weak! Relax, Sarah. They'll defeat themselves when their heads accidentally explode. However, everything is coming back three times. Bonnie is now sexy Freddy Krueger. Rochelle has to get to the Hotel Excelsior for their convention. And Nancy has to live in three trailers. Ooh, it's on now. She's gonna stalk the shit out of the climax from Halloween H2O. Sarah will win this. She has the god of Sam Raimi on her side, while Nancy just has a constant do I, do I want to be hit by an oncoming train look on her face. This movie really does know how to do some creepy shit with snakes and bugs. This has become my favorite aspect of the movie. I think snakes and bugs is another theme we've got going on this Halloween. And I'm sure she'll stop doing evil after this. I bind you, Nancy, from doing harm. Harm against other people and harm against yourself. I bind you. Again, stop pissing off people in 1996 who look like this. Some of the effects are simultaneously dated, yet could be worse? Certainly nothing that takes me out of the movie or makes me scoff. 
Well, now that that's over, the other girls' powers are taken away as they come back with some serious energy that says, So, we're good, right? Oh, and Dad's fine. Sure, Roald Dahl would hate the ending to this. However, Sarah is the only one left with any powers, as she demonstrates. And then she caused a real plane crash. As for the worst witch... It's you! It's you! He's, he gave me power! <laughs> Don't worry about her. Pinhead will get her out of that hospital. Thus ends Dimension Films the movie, which is weird considering Columbia released this. While receiving mixed reviews from critics, the movie was a sleeper hit at the box office. And while on my end, it's fun to look back on it as a definite 1996 time capsule, for a lot of other people, it is way more than that. The movie has an incredibly loyal fan base, and I can see why, as the film has even had special Halloween screenings over the years that feature cast members of the movie. The film has even been seen as a rite of passage for many young women over the past 24 years. I guess it has enough of a legacy that the upcoming sequel is called The Craft Legacy, which has a trailer that received negative feedback from fans. Yeah, no shit. And that does it for this year's Halloween with the Cinema Snob. Oh no, I forgot to wear a costume this year. Well, it never is too late for last minute costume shopping. There we go. Uh, mm, uh, mm. I'm a wizard now. Mm -hmm. ah!